been suspected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no, tough. they suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. Shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan? Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter. It's like they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness! Did he say they they cock it on them? I hate the style of defense. I... Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! It is pouring down rain outside. But it's funny because I've got a metal roof on here, and it's just that kind of, it's kind of soothing. It's that white noise sound. Oh, man. It is game day morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and he's got his coffee. He's got his raid. He is going to be ready today. And then there's the Mystic Mojo. The mystic that Brian has. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because I'm ready. I am ready, although I do need to go ride out to Charlottesville and pick up this door this morning and get back and get ready. I was going to do a Ruben stub, but shout out to my buddy Jet D. Jet D said, no, man, you need to do some kind of a chicken sub because that's like having some bird. So I think we're going to do, I don't know, I think maybe an Italian, Italian with some pepper jack cheese and Italian sauce and mushrooms and onions and peppers grilled together with that cheese melted on top of it. Good morning, good people. Thank you as always for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, I've got my friend um, Derek. Derek, you know, helped me consulting on uh, my website as well as like the computers and things that I have. The reason I bought this computer right here where he helped me save a lot of money, uh, shout out to Megabikes that's in Florida, is I was looking at a computer that was an Alienware laptop that was like $2,600. But he told me this Legion one had all of the things that I needed to be able to do what I needed to do on the go. And it was about half the money. So shout out to Derek. So that's probably the main reason why I still talk to Derek because he has a way of pissing me off. He still, even last week, was saying crazy shit like, you know, the Cowboys need to try Trey Lance because Dak Prescott's just going to be too expensive. And see, I understand now why. Because I was going to go ahead and get the Alienware. I had the Alienware at home and stuff, you know? And that was the one I knew would be able to do the job. But Derek, he's looking to save some money and things. I, I get I get his philosophy on that. But see, for me, if you can't get what you need to get the first to go around, don't try and settle for something that might be cheaper just because it's cheaper. You need something that's doing the deal. And right now, having a guy who's an MVP candidate is a guy you want to keep on the field. But be that as it may... I've stopped answering my Marco Polo. So I was like, dude, when he literally sent me that Marco Polo, I was like, I can't talk to you there. So instead, he sent sent me an email. I guess if I don't respond to it, he's going to do smoke signals next. The Cowboys still haven't beaten a team that currently has a winning winning record this season. Well, um, the Jets were just beat the Buffalo Bills, who have the cover boy for bad. But be that as it may. And that was back when Buffalo was considered actually a good team because they were playing well before they went on the slot. And they were beating the Seattle Seahawks, who, mind you, actually played the Eagles and the 49ers. And for some strange reason, I think that they're going to beat one of those teams. I really and truly do because they're out of desperation to stay in the playoff chase themselves. But be that as it may, he is 9-24 and versus teams that finish the season with 10-plus wins. And 54 and 16 versus everyone else. Only Matthew Stafford and Kirk Cousins have bigger disparities since 1970. This strep represents an opportunity for him to kill two birds with one stone, put up numbers, and win the games that lock up the MVP and kill the narrative that he can't win big games, thus building confidence entering the postseason when Dallas has choked. 
It starts with a critical game against the Eagles, and the Cowboys have a win for their division title hopes and Prescott's MVP hopes. They have the rest advantages played last Thursday and have 14 home straight games and can beat Philly team when it's down. That's not a stretch I'm looking forward to watch the next month, which is true. Now, I'm going to say something here because, you know, understanding that <clears throat> statistics, mean, median, mode, modulations, I'm going to say that this is a cherry-picked statistic here because here's the thing. I bet you if you just go and say, what is your record? Just because, see, this is where this is how they get you. If you just say, What is your record, NFL quarterbacks, with teams with 10 plus wins? I bet you there's a lot of other quarterbacks that are great quarterbacks that have ones as bad or worse than Dak Prescott. See, the thing is, is here, here's the caveat that's put in here your record versus 10 plus winning teams, just do that as a category. Because I'm betting that a lot of quarterbacks that have 10-plus wins you know, against winning teams probably don't necessarily have a winning record like that as well. Because here's the thing. Dak Prescott's got a lot more wins than the majority of the quarterbacks that are out here. See, what we're talking about here is we're talking about a guy who's got 78 wins to 25 losses, 3-1. to one. Not a lot of quarterbacks have that many wins, period, in the totality of their career. So this is where this is kind of kind of contrary. It's true. It's true the way you have that. But the thing is, is you've got quarterbacks that are winning a lot of games versus most that don't. Because that would make you think that, say, I don't know, um, uh, uh, what's the quarterback for, for the Jets? That would say, oh, my God. That means, you know, um, Zach Wilson. That Zach Wilson is better than Dak Prescott. No, he's not better than Dak Prescott. No, he's not better than Dak Prescott. Sorry, Derek. This is a bullshit stat that you just brought. This is somebody that's cherry-picked to get a reaction and make you say, this guy sucks. But anybody who wins 78 games. Let me, let me see. Let me see. List. Of QBs with 75 wins or more. Let's see if let's see if that'll come up. So let me see. This is gonna be a long list. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. So, da, 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 da. so you know, like Drew Brees in his whole career only had 98. Alex Smith had 99. Dave Craig had 98. Donovan McNabb had 98. So I'm looking at this list here, and Dak is still playing. Um, Roger Staubach only had 85 career wins. Andy Dalton had 83. Randall Cunningham, 82. John, uh, I don't know, John, John Hadi, 82. Kerry Collins, Bobby Lane, Craig Morton, Boomer Sison. Ryan Tannehill has 80. Wow. Mark Brunell has 78. Y.A. Tittle. Okay. Cousins has 76. Okay. Cam Newton has 75. Jay Cutler, 74. Ron Jaworski. So you start looking at this. Jim Plunkett only has 72. And he's a Hall of Famer. Um, Derek Carr has 68. So Jim McMahon has 67. Kurt Warner only has 67. Jim uh, Harbaugh has 66. Hmm. Jared Goff has 63. So the thing is, is to get to that disparity, you don't have enough games out there to play. So I'm going to cry bullshit. But you know what? I'm not going to argue with a Dallas Cowboy fan, Dak Prescott hater today, because today is game day. I want to see the Dallas Cowboys. Like me, I have been taking shit. Taking shit from Eagle fans all last year. I didn't get that many clips of Philly 500 melting down. 
They've told me that they are the far superior team, that the Dallas Cowboys suck, they're chokers, that Dak Prescott is a turnover machine, that we're ass, ass, we suck, we're sorry, and the Eagles are the greatest team ever devised. And yet, here they come, limping into Dallas. And quiet, quiet. I pulled out the eggnog, trying to call out Philly 500. I've texted, I'm emailing. Oh, this week is about business. This week's about business. You're hiding, Philly. You're hiding. But this is the chance for the Cowboys to cross another one of those Cowboy-isms that they have off the list. Can't beat winning teams. Okay, you know, we, we did that last week with Seattle, and now it's like, oh, well, they're not currently. They're not currently winning. Okay, move the bar. The Cowboys win. They're going to say, well, the Eagles were on the road, and, uh, you know, the Cowboys had extra rest. There will be excuses made for the Eagles. If the Cowboys lose, they just suck. This is the time for the Dallas Cowboys to man the F up, get in there, and demoralize the Eagles early on. I need to see that from my team. So... I want to point out how Chris Canty, cowboy hater number one, hard to believe, literally makes every excuse in the world for the Eagles. These Eagles, I, we can't fit everybody's picks on the screen, but I can tell you ahead of time, you're the only person here who likes Philly. Why? Because Jalen Hurts doesn't lose back-to-back -back games. The last time it happened was week six and seven back in 2021, right. which was his first full season as a starter. So I think everybody's overreacting to the performance that we saw last Sunday when they got boat raced by the 49ers. But if you looked at that spot, their defense in back-to-back -back weeks had been on the field for over 30 minutes, which is a lot. They played 92 snaps in that overtime game against the Buffalo Bills. So it was a natural spot to have a letdown as far as that unit's concerned. And here's the other thing. The complexion of that game against the 49ers is completely different if the Eagles take advantage of their red zone trips in the first quarter. Yeah. They, they went over in both of those red zone opportunities. Yeah. And, and we know that this is a different San Francisco 49ers team when they're playing from behind as opposed to when they're playing from ahead. So I guess in looking at this matchup against the Cowboys, I like the Philadelphia Eagles just because I believe in the strengths of this team up front, both sides of the ball. Well, so it's interesting. So you weren't with us on Monday because you were on the road with Monday Countdown. But there's really sort of two schools of thought on Philly. One of them is exactly what Chris Canty just said. That was the ideal spot for them to have a terrible game. The other is that they've been kind of teetering on the edge all year long and it finally caved in on them. Which is right in your well, mind? Well, I don't think either is necessarily right. One, they ran into a buzzsaw that's the best team in football in the San Francisco 49ers. Uh -huh. And a lot of times we talk about teams that are bad matchups. Mm -hmm. The San Francisco 49ers, when healthy, They're are a bad, bad matchup for everybody. For everyone, mm -hmm. including the Philadelphia Eagles, and maybe more so the Philadelphia Eagles, given some of the problems at the linebacker position and in the secondary. But when you look at this game, to me, with the Dallas Cowboys, it's not the same sort of matchup. But my concern is, on the other side of that is, yes, we've seen Jalen Hurts stand up consistently, and I talk about that all the time, even when I was asked to pick between Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen going into that game. But I'm worried about offensive coordinator Brian Johnson. Mm -hmm. Why are we starting games in every single one of them that we've become a drop-back team now, that we want Jalen Hurts to sit in the middle of the pocket and stand over the queue and figure out how we're going to pick apart zones? What happened to running the football? What happened to the RPOs? Mm -hmm. What happened to using Jalen Hurts' legs? Is his knee truly hindering, hindering him from being that dual-threat quarterback? And are we going to move the pocket to give him opportunities to be the sort of quarterback that could scare you with his decision making? And so I think those things have to change. And on the other end, right now, I just think the Dallas Cowboys are better. I think the Dallas Cowboys are playing with more confidence. Mm. I think the Dallas Cowboys had a game against the Seattle Seahawks where their quarterback had to dig deep before having to dig deep this week. And that's why I picked them. And they also have the rest advantage again, to the point you made earlier. They have they have the little mini buy. Back-to-back -back weeks, the Eagles are playing a team yeah. that had played the previous Thursday. So a little edge. How about the psychology of it? The Eagles got punched in the face mm -hmm. last week. That can go two ways. It can make you question yourself or it can make you come out swinging.
seen? What do you expect? Well, listen, every one of us have understood that we have those tough games, those tough periods of our schedule. <laughs> Just like in basketball with back to back and traveling all Here stuff. we go. These are scheduled losses for Philadelphia, right? They've ca Excuses. They came off of playing Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco. We know uh, as playing That's against each other yep. as Steelers and Ravens that we used to beat each other up and it hurt us as a battle of attrition. And right now the Philadelphia Eagles look like a tired football team. Remember, you know, they, they are a team that played late into the season, played in the Super Bowl. You don't recover as fast as the older team. When you think about Kelsey, Lane, Johnson, Graham, their leaders. They, they're going to get right. This game isn't as important to Philadelphia as it is to Dallas. Dallas Here we go. figure out that they can beat a team led by Jalen Hurts, but understand that listen it's a sprint it's not a, it's, a, it's not a marathon it's a marathon it's not a sprint they have new york arizona new york this is a tired team that's going to get healthy and rested at the end of the season because they have three homecoming games Dallas has their homecoming <laughs> they had their homecoming schedule early. Oh. Canty, how about the dac factor here uh, some people all right there you have it there you have it excuses for the eagles no excuses today this would be what both teams are getting up for and are ready to play in. As always, I hope you guys join us. We'll be starting out at 1 o'clock. We'll be ready, and I'll see you there. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? Let's no. Go. They suck. I've been telling you all season, They've Philly. They've shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jayla Carter? It's like, they shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> They have shit on you. Don't don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Jayla Carter? It's like they shit on you. Kill them. Oh my goodness. Did he say